Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا رسول حيا رسول حيّر الفراخ خيّر الفراخ الله أكبر الله أكبر لا We seek God's protection against the influences of the shaitan who has been rejected and outcast. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. With God's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahaduhu la shirikallahu ashadu anna muhammadin abdu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm Mubarak. We give open testimony there is only one God who stands alone without any partners or associates and it's He alone who deserves our worship. We further give open testimony that Muhammad the Prophet to whom the Quran was revealed is Allah's Messenger. He is the seal of the Prophets. We pray the prayers of peace be upon Muhammad the Prophet and all those righteous servants that follow him <coughs> and all else that follows this excellent greeting. Dear believers, I greet you. as salamu alaykum. May the peace that only God can give be with you. <clears throat> I pray that God will guide my speech and my tongue, prevent me from errors and mistakes I acknowledge before I begin, any that I make of my own. I humbly ask his forgiveness for those mistakes in advance and that he leads me to a better understanding so that I won't make them again. And I acknowledge before beginning that any good that comes from this talk is not for me, it is from him. And we say all the praises for God, all praises for God, all the praise belongs to God, who is the Lord of all of the worlds. I advise you, <clears throat> as I advise myself first, <clears throat> as a constant reminder that the best thing that we're going to do in this life ever, trust me, is to believe in God and develop our belief in the faith and to develop a conscious regardfulness of God, knowing that he is present, that he is aware, that will prevent us from making the mistakes that we make sometimes in this life to cause stain on our souls, which prevents us from the best rewards in this life and will keep us from the best reward of the hereafter. And God says in Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina a'aminu O oh, you who have grown to have faith in God. Wataqwallah. Be regardful of God. And let every soul look to what provisions it has sent before it for tomorrow. Yes. Stay conscious of God, for God is well acquainted with all that you do. And 
don't be like those who forgot God. And then he made them forget their own souls. Such people are rebellious transgressors. Not equal are the companions of the fire and the champions of the garden. Because those that are the champions of the garden will achieve happiness, success, and the reward from God. Your creator, God, the God, is he and there is no other God besides him. It is he who knows all the things that are both secret and open. He is the most gracious and he is most merciful. He, the one God, is he upon whom there is again no other God. For he is the sovereign. He is the Holy One. He is the source of peace. And he is the source of perfection. He is the guardian of faith, the preserver of safety, the exalted in might, the irresistible, the supreme. Glory belongs to God, the one and only God. High is he above any partners that might be attributed to him. He is the one God, the creator, the evolver, the restorer of forms, the restorer of colors. To him belong the most beautiful names. And whatever is in the heavens and on the earth declares his praises and his glory. And he is exalted in might the wise. So all you who believe in God and have grown to have faith, turn to the one God repeatedly with sincere repentance in the hope that your Lord will remove from you all of the ills that are within you and will admit you to the garden beneath which rivers flow. On the day that God will not permit to be humiliated, the prophet and those who believe with him, their light will run forward before them and by their right hands, while they say, Our Lord, perfect our light for us, and grant us forgiveness, for thou have power over all things. They say, our Lord, in thee do we trust, and to thee do we turn in repentance, and to thee is our final goal. Our Lord, make us not a test and a trial for the unbelieving folks, but forgive us, our Lord, for thou art exalted in might, the wise. And surely God speaks the truth. We pray, our Lord, forgive us if we forget a fall in the error. Grant us protection against our shortcomings and faults. Help us to keep our feet firmly on your straight path. Cause us to strive as we should be striving and reward us for our striving both in this life as well as in the hereafter and save us far from the torment of the fire. Amen.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear believers, God says when the earth is shaken to its utmost convulsion and the earth throws up its burden that is within it and man cries in distress what is the matter with it? On that day will it declare its tidings? For that thy Lord will have given it inspiration. On that day will men proceed in companies sorted out to be shown the deeds that they have done. Then shall anyone who has done an atom's weight of good see it, and anyone who has done an atom's weight of evil, they will also see it. And surely God speaks the truth. This is Surah 99 that I just read from. And I apologize for not mentioning the ayats that I read in the first part. But for those who would like to go back and review those verses, they were verses from Surah 59. And they were Hayat 18 to 24. And I read then from Ayat 66, excuse me, Surah 66, Ayat 8. And then from Surah 60, um, 4 and 5, for those who want to go back and review them. But in this Surah that I just read, Surah 99, Allah talks about the earthquake, El Zalza. And God says that when the earth is shaken to its utmost convulsion and the earth throws up its burden and men cries in distress, what is the matter with it? It says on that day it will declare its tidings for that the Lord will have given it inspiration. On this day will men proceed in companies sorted out to be shown the deeds that they have done. Then shall anyone that has an, done an Adam's weight of good see it, and anyone who has done an Adam's weight of evil they will also see it. And again, surely God speaks the truth. For most who read this surah, maybe for everybody that reads this surah, they will see this surah as referring to the day of judgment, the day of accountability in the chain of events that take place leading to our final account or accounting for our life's works or our life's inactivity that we have to account for with God, this day of, of, of reckoning, this day of accountability when we stand before our Lord and we are uh, put everything out on the table and we were held accountable for the things that we did or we didn't do. And most people look at this earthquake as one of the signs of the end of times, the, the, the end of times. You know, when you read scripture and you listen to religious folk, they always talk about the signs of the end of time, that there are violent earthquakes, that there are hurricanes, there are natural disasters, there's so many things that are happening in the, in the world around us that are signs for the coming of this day of judgment. And I would agree with you 
that reading this surah, you find references to this particular time. However, I wanted to add that I see the verses in Quran and in the scripture not just referring to a time that will come at the end of our time on this earth, this physical, our physical time on this physical earth. And you hear a lot of people now saying we're living in the last days. Um, I've even heard our Imam Muhammad, um, Walter D. Muhammad, may God forgive him his sins and grant him the paradise, referring to these days, these times being the last days. And we're seeing the natural disasters. We're seeing the fires and the hurricanes and the tsunamis and the earthquakes and et cetera. We're seeing we're seeing plagues. Uh, this pandemic, this health pandemic is a plague. It's, it's what biblically we would look at as a plague. We're seeing all of these physical things take place around us. And they are signs triggering, um, I mean, signaling an end of time. And although I believe that God knows best, I don't believe that the life on this earth is about to is to 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 cease right now. God knows best, but I don't believe that. But what I do believe is that the earth and everything that is in the earth including the human beings that are here on this earth are all playing their part in the culmination of a time that we have lived in. Where evil, wickedness, immorality, hatred, bigotry, and a number of other things that aren't good are coming to an end. Imam Muhammad used to say, goodness is on the rise. Goodness is on the rise. And so we find ourselves in a place where there's this shaking taking place, like an earthquake. Like if you've ever experienced an actual earthquake where the ground underneath you begins to rock and shake. And the earth opens up and it swallows things and people. Just the shaking of the earth is enough to, to sh shake you up. It's almost like, it's almost like, listen, man, look at the signs of how God does things. If you ate something bad and it was on your stomach, you feel a rumbling in your stomach and it and your body it, it, it ejects that whatever it is out of you that 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 shouldn't be there, that that harmful substance that's in your stomach, it, it throws it up. It expels it. Well, I'm saying that we're living in a time now the end of time for the rule of everything that's evil and bad. And I'm not saying that evil is going away. I'm not saying that bad things are going away. I'm not saying that corruption is completely going away. But I am saying that we're living in a time where things are being shaken up. If you recall in my last couple of talks, I mentioned chaos being a change agent. That when you are in a peaceful environment, a peaceful society, a peaceful reality, nothing really changes. Because nobody's really trying to change anything. Because everybody's content with what their reality is. But now we're living in a space and a time where people are beginning to be dissatisfied with all the ugly, nasty things that have been 
been very uh, prevalent in our life. People can no longer pretend that racism doesn't exist. Hey, racism never went away. Racism never went away. I, I have a relative that moved from Kansas City, Kansas to Atlanta, Georgia. And he told me he liked living in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he said because the people in Kansas were racist. And I said, the people in, in Georgia are not racist? He said, no, yeah, they racist in Georgia. He said, but the difference is the people in Kansas City, Kansas are the kind of racists that pretend they like you. They pretend not to be racist and you can't see their, you can't see overtly what they do that, that, that displays their racism. But he said, I like these redneck people, he said, out here in, in, in Atlanta, Georgia, because if they don't like you, you know they don't like you. They straight out racist and they don't, they let you know that they racist. They walk around with their Confederate flags on. They walk around uh, with, using language to let you know where they coming from. But he said, I, I prefer the outright racist that I can see rather than having the racist that I don't know is really racist. But racism never went away, I guess is the point that I'm trying to make. But we're living in, a, in, in an environment that would like us to believe that it went away a long time ago. But people can no longer live in this environment. We're being shook up. We're being forced. Our hand is being forced and the races are being exposed. The racism is being exposed and people are no longer satisfied with living with it. Hatred, bigotry, murder, Death, all these ugly things were just wearing their ugly head at, at an overwhelming, uh, alarming rate. And people were dissatisfied with it. And so we're seeing it play out in front of us. And so there's this, this big convulsion that's happening in the earth around us right now. And God says that when this happens, one of the things that takes place is a sorting out. There is a sorting out. God says that on this day, men proceed in companies sorted out. And we have an opportunity to see who is really about peace who just talks about peace and who the mischief makers are. The people who understand the oneness of God's humanity, this humanity that he created, they understand the connectedness of us all as one human family. Those people who say, I'm not a racist. I got a couple of black friends. I got a couple of white friends. I'm not a racist. Oh, black people can't be racist. Only white people can be racist. But I'm not a racist. And those who really are. This is a time when all of these things are being sorted out. So I'm saying, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the end, the end of things. But he's not just talking about the end of things to where our life comes to an end. Allah is also talking about the end of things in terms of what our current reality is. And if you really understand, it's not just about these, these times that we're living in where these things are happening in the society or an environment around us. This, this listen, uh, if you're familiar to listening to me teach, then you know that I believe, and God is the best knower. I could be wrong, but God is the best knower. I believe that everything that God gives you as a sign and a symbol in scripture and in creation and even in yourself, he's given them to you and me 
as help for our lives. All of it is help for our lives. And we are to be able to look at each one of these signs and symbols and etc., and gain from them some help for whatever situation that we, we, we encounter in this life. So I say that they're all uh, formulas for our success. I say that they're all uh, principles. They're all, uh, yes, uh, principles that if, if understood and applied will help us be successful through this life. So if you see yourself in situations that become volatile, it doesn't matter what situation it is. A situation that becomes volatile, a situation that, be, that, that shakes you, that shakes, shakes your conscience, shakes your thinking. Then that situation is meant to help you change, correct your course, and create a better reality for yourself. It's an opportunity for you to see the truth from the lies. The deception that's even in your own soul. Because you know we lie to ourselves. Or maybe that's just me. But we lie to ourselves. And if not so, God wouldn't say this. God says, on this day that the people are sorted out, he said, they will be shown their deeds that they have done. And everyone who has done an Adam's weight of good will see it. And everyone that's done an Adam's weight of bad or evil, they will also see it. So this day of sorting out is a, a separation between the truth and the lie of matters. And, and isn't it true that when you have to face something that you were in denial about yourself, when you are confronted with the truth of the matter, doesn't it, doesn't it shake you up a little bit to have to accept that that's me? That I need, that's me? I thought that he was the problem. I thought she was the problem. But having to be confronted with the reality that is you that's the problem. Particularly, if you come to it on your own, maybe it doesn't shake you up as much. When somebody points it out to you, that's problematic <laughs> for most people. And it shakes you up. But I'm saying that that shaking up is necessary for you to expel that wrong, that bad thing from you. It's necessary for you to see clearly what your reality is and give you an opportunity to change yourself, fix yourself, fix your situation so that you can move to a better reality. So when we look at the chain of events that are taking place in our lives, we have to look at all of the challenges that we are facing and how we as a society of people are being shaken up right now. That we're in convulsion. We are. And how this convulsion is causing us to be sorted out. We, have, we will learn about ourselves where we really stand on things. What we're willing to fight for. What we're willing to stand up for. And what we're willing to accept what we have done to contribute and what we are not doing to contribute. This is the time for us to see these things. And God willing by us seeing these things, we have an opportunity for us to work for a better reality for us. And this is again, the end of time, the end of time for all of this foolishness. I can't promise you that it will end tomorrow or next week, next year. It could, we could be still ending it for the next 50 years. God knows best. But no, we are seeing the conclusion of some matters. 
And these conclusions will cause us to change ourselves and God willing, create a better tomorrow for us. When we are sorted out collectively, I pray to God that I end up on the side of what's right. When I'm looking at the sorting out that takes place between the truth of the lies of my good and my evil, I hope that I have the insight to see and be receptive to the truth. And where I find myself wrong, I pray that God will give me the resolve to repent and pray for his forgiveness and the strength to straighten myself up and to do right. And where I'm doing good, that he will give me the strength to stay the course. And I pray the same for each of you. I don't know. If I said anything of value, or benefit, but if I have, it came, it came from God. Again, we say Alhamdulillah, all praises for God. We thank him for his infinite wisdom and insight. We pray that he continues to guide us and keep our feet on a straight path. We pray that he causes us to study his book as it should be studied that we see the signs that he has blessed us with as helps and tools for us to utilize so that we can be successful in this life, so that we can have the success for the hereafter. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.